Hi, I'm Travis Vermilia. I'm an associate professor in the visual arts department at the University of Colorado, Denver. And today I'd like to share with you some information about becoming a medical illustrator. So I've been a medical illustrator uh, for the past 20 years. I recently changed uh, my career a little bit to focus on fine art. But before that, I had a 20 year successful career as a medical illustrator and animator. I've had students reach out to me over the years, uh, almost every semester, asking questions about what it takes to become a medical illustrator. So if you have questions similar to those, uh, this video is for you. I'm going to answer some common questions like, what does a medical illustrator or animator do? What does it take to become one? What kinds of educational opportunities are out there? And what are the educational requirements to become a medical illustrator? And I'll provide some resources and some quick tips to help you get started in your own pathway if this is something you'd like to do. All right, here we go. So what does a medical illustrator do? Essentially, medical illustrators tell very accurate stories visually about science and medicine to a very specific audience. So every project that you work on is going to change depending on who the audience is. We use visual tools and skill sets based in art and design to tell complicated stories about science and medicine in a way that's easy to understand. We strip away everything that's unnecessary so that we can tell the story accurately and only keep what is necessary to do that. So what are the different types of medical illustration out there? Well, there are lots of different ways we could think about breaking this down. But for us, we're going to break it down based on the type of audience uh, and the intention of the illustration or animation. So the first one we'll talk about is surgical illustration. Mostly, surgical illustrations are designed to communicate to surgeons, right? So these are things you might see in, for example, a surgical atlas or in a surgical training program where the illustrations or animations are designed specifically to educate other surgeons on a specific process, technique, or use of specific medical devices and tools. And there are medical legal illustrations. So this is specifically geared towards the legal profession. If, this, if law and medicine is something that you're uh, excited about combining, this might be a good choice for you. Medical legal illustrators create images that help the jury understand what happened, right? And they can work for either side. It might be a medical malpractice case where you're working for the surgeon to help the surgeon uh, communicate the process that they did in their surgery, that they did it accurately and correctly. It might be for the patient who had something unfortunately go wrong during the surgery and the attorney is trying to convince the jury that the doctor did not do a good job. So it just depends on uh, the kind of case that you get involved in. But it's an exciting field. You can do uh, 2D illustrations as well as three-dimensional animations. And there are companies that solely focus on medical legal illustration and animation. Didactic illustrations teach to a specific audience. A good example of this would be patient education. So a patient needs to understand exactly what surgical procedure is going to be done to them, what are the steps involved, and a didactic surgical illustration would help the patient understand that. This can also be an animation, a uh, step-by-step procedure. A lot of times for things like patient education, you have to keep in mind uh, use of color, things have to be softer, right? So you're really considering your audience. It could also be something that's designed for a magazine or an article in a journal or um, even a poster for a conference or something like that. Anything that teaches a step-by-step -step process based in medicine and science to a specific audience would be a didactic illustration. Editorials, kind of a different sort of beast compared to the other types. Editorial illustrations, particularly pertaining to medical illustration, are illustrations that entice an audience. So you might think about uh, a cover for a magazine. You might think about a large spot illustration for a journal article, right? So these, the job of an editorial illustration is to draw the audience in, make them excited and want to either pick up the magazine or want to stay focused on that article and read it through to the end. Who do medical illustrators work for? Medical illustrators could work for a medical and scientific company or a health company. Uh, it could even be an insurance company, right? So you think about a uh, medical device, pharmaceutical, there are lots of uh, health focused companies that might hire a medical illustrator to help them communicate what they do for their specific clients. 
medical illustration and animation companies exist out there. And these companies uh, are kind of nice because like as an illustrator getting out of school, you could get a job for a medical illustration company or medical animation firm. And what's nice about that is the company finds the work, right? So the company has clients and then your responsibility is to create the animations or create the illustrations for the company you work for. So you have a full-time job with a salary and benefits and all of that. So it's a nice option, uh, finding a company like that that you can work for. I have had quite a few students go off and get jobs um, after they graduate medical illustration school, get jobs uh, at medical illustration companies. And then the final one is working for yourself, right? So this is what I did for much of my career. Uh, I was a self-employed medical animator. When you're working for yourself, you have to wear a bunch of different hats. You have to figure out how to do your own marketing and branding, right? You have to go figure out how you're going to get your own clients. You have to understand business and uh, the ins and outs, you know, tax taxes and how to uh, invoice and keep track of all the things that you're doing. Things that if you worked for an employer, they would do all of that work. So working for yourself is a lot more responsibility. You also get to set your own hours uh, and it can be really very rewarding. So if you're a self-starter and you're extremely motivated, being self-employed as a medical illustrator or animator might be for you. I usually tell people that they might wanna find a job first working for a company and then eventually break off and do their own thing just so you get the hang of what it's like to be out there in the world working and, and you can get a firsthand sort of view of what it's like to have clients and you know what your employer does. Most people that I know that work for themselves did at one point work for someone else before that. And that was my case. I worked for a company called Medical Modeling in Golden, Colorado. And I had I was the only artist for that company and I did a lot of different things. So I wore a lot of different hats within, within that company, but uh, I found, had a lot of opportunities as well. like working on conjoined twin cases and doing medical animations. And some of that work got on, you know, national publications and I had worked on Oprah and Dateline NBC and things like that. So it was a wonderful opportunity. But uh, I then broke off and started working for myself and I love that as well. And now I'm a university professor trying to help other people understand how they can do these things as well. So who makes a good candidate for medical illustration? Typically, scientists, artists, and teachers, people that gravitate towards those sorts of areas, would make a good medical illustrator. They could be doctors or scientists who have an interest in art or are, are active artists and start creating medical illustrations. They could be artists who are extremely interested in science and really excited about telling stories in science and medicine. And there are lots of other combinations out there as well. If you're interested in medicine and science and teaching and art altogether, I think you'd make a great candidate for a medical illustrator. So school, education, what kind of undergraduate education would you need to become a medical illustrator? Well, it can vary, right? There are lots of options out there. No, no, there's no like set path. There are all sorts of different paths that people can take, but these are sort of some typical examples, right? So you might be a biology or pre-med student and get a minor in art, right? So medical illustration requires a lot of drawing. I always tell people the number one thing you can do in your undergrad to get very prepared for medical illustration is learn how to be an extremely accurate observational drawer, right? So you need to draw you need to be able to set something in front of you and draw it incredibly accurately. This will help prepare you. Lots of figure drawing and things like that. You could be an art major uh, and get a minor in biology or pre-med. So I know a lot of people in the field who are on both sides. Many people focused their undergrad in art and then took the biology classes that they needed to get into the programs for graduate school. And I know many who were science uh, students, biology students, who then focused on developing their artistic skills so that they could get into the graduate programs. And some people do a dual major in biology and art, and that tends to work really well. Uh, you'll probably, probably wind up taking more classes than you need to actually get into a program, but you'll also have a much wider skill set and set of knowledge uh, when you begin.
So that could be beneficial. There are quite a few undergraduate programs out there that are designed as pre-medical illustration or scientific il illustration programs at the undergraduate level. And those will prepare you, uh, sometimes even for just entering the field in, uh, in certain areas and uh, also for getting accepted into graduate programs. And another option, this is what I personally did, is looking for an individually structured major. So many universities offer the opportunity to design your own degree. And so when I went to school in my undergrad, I decided that I wanted to be a medical illustrator and get into graduate school for medical illustration. So I designed a degree that specifically allowed me to meet the requirements for the graduate programs. So that might be an option for you as well. Where are the graduate programs in North America located? There are a few in North America. And right now, um, Augusta University in Georgia is one option. University of Illinois Chicago has a great program. Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine in Baltimore, Maryland has a program. And in fact, they were the first medical illustration program in the United States. University of Toronto has a wonderful program. I really like what they're doing there. And all of these programs are fantastic. I'm just sort of highlighting a couple that are my, maybe my favorites, and I'm a little biased, I guess. But the Rochester Institute of Technology in New York is the newest accredited programs. And I should um, cover that as well. So these are all the accredited programs through the Association of Medical Illustration. They're KHEP accredited, and I'll go through that a little bit later in the video when I show you the Association of Medical Illustrators website as one of the resources. But these schools are sort of considered uh, pre-approved by the medical illustration as meeting all the requirements that one needs to graduate and enter the field. How about Europe? There are a few programs in Europe. Uh, so there's one in the Netherlands. There's one in France. Uh, there's one in Scotland that offers two different degrees, one-year degrees. And there's one in Liverpool uh, in the UK. And so if you're interested in finding out more about the European schools, uh, the Institute of Medical Illustrators is the association in Europe. So check their website out. I have a link to their website later on, uh, as, as well as one in the description. I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit later on in the resources section. So what is it like to go to graduate school for medical illustration? They're all going to vary a little bit. Um, I can speak mostly about my own experience, so just to give you an understanding of where I came from, uh, I graduated from the University of Michigan's School in Biomedical Visualization. I graduated in 2002. Uh, that program does not exist anymore, uh, but it was a fantastic program. Um, it's, it's funny that we sort of have the same number of programs in North America now. Some go away occasionally and others pop up, so I think the Rochester RIT program uh, is the most recent one to get accreditation and become one of the sort of choice programs for medical illustration. But like I said, I went to the University of Michigan. I got my master's of fine arts degree in medical and biological illustration there, graduating in 2002. So, so in medical illustration programs, you typically study a mix of medicine and art. They are associated with a medical school, right? So a University of Michigan, uh, the University of Michigan's medical school is where I took some of my classes. You take classes in human gross anatomy and anatomical drawing. So that first semester for me was really about anatomy almost all of the time. So we would spend a lot of time in lecture. We'd spend a lot of time dissecting. In fact, we had my group of, of medical illustration students had a, a teacher just for us who taught us the dissection in the morning. And then we would go to lecture and then come back and help the medical students understand what the dissection was going to be for the day. So that was a really wonderful opportunity to have that learning and then teaching uh, experience, which really helps gain the knowledge and helps you uh, memorize things. And then the other days we would spend time drawing from the cadavers in the cadaver lab. Surgical observation is really important, right? So just getting comfortable in an operating room, speaking with surgeons, and then being able to take that information and convert it into a illustration that tells the story accurately 
and doing that sort of under the protection of school, right? So you, you're doing that in a, in a system, in a teaching hospital, so they're used to working with students. And it's a much, it's a really nice experience, right? It helps you uh, more comfortably get used to working with surgeons and with doctors in the hospital setting. You also take classes in pathology, embryology, and other medical sciences. And many programs um, offer classes in 2D and 3D animation for illustration and science, as well as website or interaction design courses that are geared towards, of course, medicine and science. And then more commonly, we're seeing uh, classes in gaming and game design for health and medicine as things like Unreal Engine and become more common in the tool set for medical animators and illustrators. Uh, we're seeing more and more classes like this pop up in the programs. So I wanted to provide you with some resources and I'll talk about a few of these and then I'll actually show you those resources. So these are probably the three most important resources I think I can I direct anyone to. And the first one is the Association of Medical Illustrators in North America. It's ami.org. I'm just going to come in here and say ami.org and we'll look at their website. So any kind of questions you have about the Association of Medical Illustrators, any kind of questions you have about the field of medical illustration, you'll probably be able to find it on this website. So you can learn about the field. What is a medical? A lot of the things I just covered are available on here. You can access the directory, uh, search for medical illustrators, right? So if you're looking for a mentor or something like that, this is a good place to go in the membership directory to find a medical illustrator in your area. Um, you can also learn about entering the profession, uh, all of the education requirements. So a lot of the things I just mentioned, you can come out here and learn more about the curriculum at the schools, um, how do the programs assess for quality? What about if you're in high school and you want to learn more about medical illustration? What if you're a doctor or a clinician or a PhD looking into the field? How might you go about that? So there's a whole wealth of information on this website that's going to be very helpful for you. You can look into undergraduate programs. So I'll go ahead and open a couple of these and graduate programs. So here's a list of all the undergraduate programs. Um, offering bachelor's degrees in pre-medical, biological, or scientific illustration. And there are quite a few of them, quite a few options for you to choose from. And then there are minors in there as well. And then the graduate degree programs are listed in here. And so the master's degree programs in North America that I already mentioned, you can come out to this website and find the websites and information for all of the other graduate programs. So if you're really curious about finding out what each individual school's requirements are, what the culture is like, what kinds of projects students are working on, and uh, whether or not you think it's a good fit for you, first visiting the AMI's website is a great choice. If you're in Europe, uh, the other resource that I had out here was the Institute of Medical Illustrators. And so I'm going to show you that website as well. The Institute of Medical Illustrators site is the European version. Um, they have lots of resources out here. You can find a professional. You can learn about uh, the education options for students in Europe and what kinds of educational opportunities are out there. And the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about, the last resource I wanted to talk to you about, is the Medical Illustration Sourcebook. So the Medical Illustration Sourcebook is a art buyer's book. It goes out to different companies all over the country, and it is an opportunity for medical illustrators to advertise for themselves. And basically a medical illustrator animator purchases, or a company purchases an ad, and it's a one or two page ad in this book. But the reason I'm saying this is a good resource for people that are interested about medical illustration is it is a great place to find out what medical illustration is and what types of work people are doing out there. And so we'll check out the medical illustration source book. So there are different ways you can sort of explore the information on the website. So you could look at medical animation, you could look at medical legal or natural science, or you could just come out here and browse the print edition. And that's what I'd recommend you do. Um, the print edition is terrific. It allows you to sort of thumb through it like a book and you get 
to see all of the resources. You get to see all of the medical illustrators and companies who have put ads in the book. And just clicking through here, it gives you a good sense for the state of the art in the field right now, right? So you can see what type of work people are doing out here for medical illustration. What kind of clients are getting, what kind of projects they're working on, what are the different styles and techniques. You're seeing a lot of 3D right now, right? So 3D animation, 3D rendered graphics um, are very popular right now. But you'll also see uh, hand-drawn illustrations and uh, some of these people I have admired for many, many years. Uh, Molly Borman is someone I've followed for a long time. I love her aesthetic quality, the hand-drawn sort of look and feel. It's beautiful. And so check this out. It'll give you a great, it's a great resource for you to just get a great, a good feeling for what's going on in the field. One of the last things I want to talk to you about is just a few tips. What can you do right now to prepare yourself uh, and even get some practice in to decide if this is something for you. And the first thing I'd suggest is draw. In fact, if you're someone who loves to draw and loves to draw accurately, if you love science, if you like microscopic things, if you like uh, seeing surgery on television and you don't get very squeamish around things like that, I think you're a good candidate. But draw, draw, draw. Keep drawing, keep practicing drawing, keep getting better at drawing. That is the number one thing you can do is being able to represent things spatially, having nice line quality, being able to show light on form really well. Uh, if you can get into some figure drawing classes early on, I think that's really helpful. The next thing I'd recommend is finding a mentor. So as I mentioned, the Association of Medical Illustrators has great resources for finding medical illustrators in your area particularly if you're in the United States. And I recommend doing that. Find someone who is nearby, we're nice people, and reach out and say, hey, I just, just like to talk and chat and see how you feel about the field and uh, see if you can give me some feedback and help me make a decision about what I should do. I think it's a great opportunity and most people are gonna be open to that. The third thing I'd recommend is practice doing it. Right, So find a medical topic, find a journal article, or maybe a Scientific American article, something like that, that needs an illustration or maybe has an illustration already, but you think you have another idea for it. And just create something and, and try it and maybe even show it to a few people and see what they think about it and get some feedback. I think practicing as you go is always a good opportunity. Uh, so just you know, get as much practice in while you're learning as you can. If you have any questions about medical illustration that I perhaps didn't answer here, uh, please leave a comment and I'll try and get back to you. Or you can even email me. My email is available here on this contact slide. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, please like and subscribe to my channel. I make video tutorials using Cinema 4D as my tool of choice to create animations that are about science in nature, but I also do tutorials about how to do medical animation. But please like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in another video. If you're still watching, thank you for being here. I just wanted to tell you a little story about my experience in medical illustration graduate school at the University of Michigan. So one of the things that we had to do is visit the morgue, right? So we had to work with the forensic pathologists at the University of Michigan morgue. And it was one of the most memorable, if slightly disgusting, <laughs> experiences I've ever had in my life. So. Uh, there were three of us at the time, and we walked into the morgue, three, three medical illustration students, and we walked into the morgue uh, to an incredibly overwhelming smell of decay. And, the, and when we walked in, there was a uh, body of an individual who unfortunately passed away in the hospital due to medical complications. The view of the room looked like something out of a science fiction novel or a science fiction movie. The patient um, had passed away on the operating table. 
and they the surgeons had to cut open her abdomen and suture in a, an opened up IV bag to allow her abdomen to expand because she was uh, bleeding internally due to a, a ruptured vessel or something of that sort. And unfortunately, they were unable to contain the bleeding. But when we walked in uh, to this scene, it was a sheet over the body with uh, a mound on top of the abdomen that was very, very clear. And I don't mean to, I don't want to, I'm not trying to make light of any of this or make any jokes. It was a very serious situation, um, but just gut wrenching. So you have, I had this incredible feeling of sadness, uh, a little bit of fear and trepidation. Um, but it was also an amazing experience to learn what a forensic pathologist does on a day to day basis. And my job in this particular instance was to help weigh the coagulated blood. So I had to scoop out all of the coagulated blood from around all of these organs and place it on a scale and write down the measurements. So that's my working in the morgue story from grad school. See ya.